Associated to every monad is an interesting category called the Claisley category of that monad. So given a monad T, B, and delta, so remember that T is a functor from a category to itself, so in fact we should write all of this out so that we have everything on hand. And B is a natural transformation from T squared to T, and delta is a natural transformation from the identity to T. So given all these data, we can construct the category associated to it. And this category has the following objects. The objects are exactly the same as the objects of C. But the thing that changes is the morphisms, the class of morphisms. While a morphism from, let's say, an object a to B, and to distinguish between morphisms in the original category and morphisms in this Claisley category, we'll use the following notation. Instead of drawing a straight arrow, we will draw sort of a squiggly arrow from the source to the target. Is defined to be a morphism A to T applied to B. So this is now a morphism in our original category, but notice that the codomain or the target of that morphism is not B itself, it's the functor T applied to B. So let's call this also F because that's what we mean by this notation. So this tells us what the objects and the morphisms are in this associated Claisley category. And we still have to define the composition. The composition of two morphisms, let's say A, F from A to B, followed by G, from B to C. Now, if we unravel what this looks like, it doesn't seem like everything is going to match up. So, we'll define it to be the composition. And before I write down what the formula is, let's all think about what it could possibly be. Now, if we start off in A, the only map we have from A and anything associated to B is our map F. Now we also have a map from B to T of C, right? So let me write that here. And that's our map G. Now if we wanted to have a map from TB to something associated to C, what we can do is we can apply our functor t to this. Oops, tg. And this lands us in t squared of c. Now this isn't exactly t of c, so we have to get back down to tc. But fortunately we have a morphism that'll help us do that, and that's coming from our natural transformation b. Maybe b was not the best letter to use, <laughs> but yeah, I realize, let's call this capital B for the purposes of this example, because I don't want to change all of these other guys. So capital B. And this lands us back down in TC. So it's defined to be this composition. And we can also define the identity map on C. Well, first, let's write it as a squiggly arrow. So we also have to define the identity map for every morphism. 
But now that we're in the Claisley category, we know that this map corresponds to a map from C to TC, or A, or whatever. So this corresponds to C to TC. And the question is, what is that map? Well, we have a map from T to TC. That's exactly the natural transformation delta. So we define this to be delta C. And this map will turn out to act as the identity for this composition. So I'll leave it to you to check that, but all of it comes from just the, the definitions of all of these natural transformations and functors and the properties that they satisfy, the commutativity of the diagrams that we wrote in the definition of a monad. Rather than showing how all of this actually forms a category, what we'll do is we'll look at an interesting functor from the original category to this one. So let's call this category by KL. Now sometimes some notations that people use are KL of C, but sometimes that's not necessarily, it's not telling us everything about um, all of our data, so maybe we can write KL of T, for instance. Let's call all of these T. So this is the Claisley category associated to our monad. Now, we also have a very natural functor from our original category to this Claisley category. So we have our original category C, our Claisley category associated to this monad, and we can take every object here and we map it to itself, and we take every morphism, so now we're actually going to take a morphism in C, so this is a map from let's say A to B, and we want to produce a morphism from a to TB here. So what is that map from A to TB? Well, we have our map from A to B here, and we follow it through with the delta natural transformation coming from our Claisley, coming from our monad. Now this composition is, again, a morphism in this category because it has the right source and target in the original category C, and it turns out that this assignment is a functor. And in the example that we gave earlier, if we take our probability monad, or the Giri monad, and we look at what this does on measurable spaces, then what we do is we get an associated category, which we'll analyze in another video more specifically, especially in terms of the associated composition. But for the moment, let's just say what happens, what the result is. If we take the jury monad on measurable spaces and measurable functions, what we get is the category of measurable spaces again, because the objects are the same. And in this case, the morphisms in the Claisley category turn out to be Markov kernels. So the jury monad, it's associated, oops, I don't mean to write these kinds of arrows, but the associated Claisley category is equivalent to the category of measurable spaces and Markov kernels. And this lets us view probability theory or a very large part of probability theory is roughly equal to the Claisley category of a probability monad. And you might wonder, what is the significance of a statement like that? Or really, it's not really a precise statement, it's sort of a philosophy that tells us that probability theory can be viewed as a sort of a categorical construction from monads. And 
this enables one to potentially think about probability theory in a diagrammatic fashion. For instance, as we explain in a different video, for instance, Bayes' theorem can be viewed as a sort of diagrammatic um, expression. And that's an example of an instance where a concept from probability theory, such as Bayes' theorem, has a diagrammatic or a categorical interpretation. And this is yet another instance of such a phenomenon that tells us that probability theory, or at least the category of measurable spaces and Markov kernels, is really the Claisley category of some monad, which has probabilistic features. There's another very interesting example of this that occurs in non-commutative uh, probability. And it says that there exists a monad on the category of C star algebras and star homomorphisms, unital star homomorphisms, such that the associated Claisley category is equivalent to the category of C star algebras and completely positive unital maps between those C star algebras. And in another video, we'll talk about precisely why this is another probabilistic notion. And the reason is because this associated Claisley category for instance, when we restrict to suitably nice measurable spaces, let's say um, topological, compact Hausdorff topological spaces with associated Markov kernels that are continuous in a certain sense, then there is a functor from that category to the category of completely positive unital maps on C star algebras. And it actually restricts to an equivalence of categories when we restrict ourselves to finite dimensional unital C star algebras. So here, uh, when I write C star algebra, I always mean unital C star algebras. And so it gives us sort of an idea for how to think about non-commutative probability theory from this categorical perspective and the perspective of the Claisley category associated to specific monads.